Hi, you have reached the podcast of Professor Haim Shor. In this episode, Free Will, the Act of Separating and Choosing. Free Will, the Act of Separating and Choosing. The essence of being human is exercising free will. This is the process by which we execute our life mission to create ourselves and to form our personality and character. Indeed, to determine who we are. The divine had created mankind, Genesis 1, 27. So God, Elohim, created mankind, in his own image, in the image of Elohim. But the divine also formed humankind, Genesis 2, 7. And Lord God, Jehovah Elohim, formed mankind of the dust of the ground. We human beings, by exercising free will throughout our life journey, we are doomed to repeat the two acts of the divine, creating and forming, whether we wish so, or otherwise. Act 1. Creating Ourselves. This implies establishing a solid link between soul and body. We do this while we grow. Before birth and for a limited time period, also after we are born. Act 2. Forming Ourselves. This implies delivering form to who we are, shaping our personality and our character. This we do while traveling our life journey by the process of exercising free will. What is the environment needed for human beings to be able to exercise free will? There are two necessary and sufficient conditions. Condition 1. Existence of good and bad mixed together, as in the tree of knowledge, good and bad, Genesis 2, 9. Condition 2. Hiddenness of God and the concealment of God's hiddenness. Prophet Isaiah delivers succinct and stunning expression to the first condition, good and bad, mixed together. Isaiah 45, 6-7 that men may know from the rising of the sun to its setting, that there is none besides me. I am Jehovah, and there is no one else. Forming light and creating darkness. Making peace and creating the bad. I, Jehovah, am doing all these. Note that creating something from nothing precedes forming, imprinting form on the created. Likewise, forming precedes making. Yet, Prophet Isaiah sets absence of light, darkness, and existence of the bad, the harmful, the evil, at a level higher than that of light and peace. Light is formed, peace is made. However, darkness and evil are created. Why? because darkness must be created before light can be formed. The bad and the evil must be created before peace can be made. Existence of the second condition, concealment of God, is a daily human experience revealed in countless debates on whether God exists. The hiddenness of God, a necessary condition for humans to be able to exercise free will, is evidence both by Biblical Hebrew and by the Bible. In Biblical Hebrew, world olam derives from same root as all Hebrew words pointing to concealment. Examples Example 1 Tahaloma, mystery Example 2 Hehomet, disappearance Example 3 Nehelam, unknown, noun, as in an algebraic equation. Example 4. Alam, secret, an adjective. 
In other words, olam, world, in Hebrew, implies that the whole world is testimony to the hiddenness of God. Prophet Isaiah repeats the same idea, Isaiah 45, 15. Indeed, you are a God who hides thyself, O God of Israel, Savior. Concealment of God, however, is itself concealed. And I will surely hide my face on that day. Pastor Astir Pion High Deuteronomy 31, 18 The repeat of the same root twice, in two consecutive Hebrew words, Pastor Astir, is traditionally interpreted, by Jewish scholars, as implying concealment of the concealment. Does God exist? This question is an integrated fact of life, which we all have experienced, at one time or another, throughout our lives. Having studied the two conditions for the existence of free will, mixing good and bad, and divine concealment, we may now ask. How do we exercise free will? What does the process comprise? We are continuously living in two worlds intermingled, most often inseparable, and indistinguishable from one another. World of Law of Nature World of Randomness We can exercise free will only in an environment that allows choice, namely, in the world of randomness. In the world of law of nature, external constraints force us to behave in certain ways and not in others. We still need to reach decisions. However, these decisions are not reflection of free will. Because no free choice is available under law of nature. In the world of law of nature, we engage in optimization. Given the rules and dictates of law of nature, we attempt to reach decisions that are best for our own existence and survival. No morality and conscience are involved in these decisions. By contrast, in the world of randomness, where randomness prevails, we are free to exercise whatever our heart desires. It is only then, in the world of randomness, that we become an agent of our own free will. And this is the realm where, through the process of exercising free will, we create and form ourselves. This is the realm where conscience and morality may be active. The two processes, that of optimization, in the world of law of nature, and that of exercising free will, in the world of randomness, do they share anything in common? The answer is a resounding yes. Both processes consist of two consecutive acts. Act 1 Separating Act 2 Choosing We need to separate good from bad before choosing. Most often in our daily lives, the good and the bad, physically bad or morally bad, are intermingled to such a degree that the two can hardly be told apart. Therefore, we need to separate before choosing. Per Prophet Isaiah, God created darkness, thereby allowing the good and the bad to coexist, mixed together. Consider the biblical Hebrew word for evening, as in, and there was evening, and there was morning, Genesis 1, 5, for example. The Hebrew word, Erev, meaning, evening, derives from same Hebrew root used for the verb to mix, Le'ariv, or for the noun mixture, Irbuv. Likewise, the tree of knowledge good and bad implies mixed together. In biblical terms, one may allegorically assert that we have all eaten of the tree of knowledge, good and bad, where the good and the bad are indistinguishable from one another. 
And since then, good and bad have become intermingled in our body and soul, delivering us our mission in life to grow and mature and create ourselves and form our personality and character. All via the process of separating good from bad and then choosing. The act of separating good from bad is twofold. And it is expressed differently in the two worlds we inhabit. In the world of law of nature, we need to separate good from bad. Because absent this separation, we may choose the bad, thereby harming our well-being and possibly even risking our lives. For example, buying fruit in the supermarket, we are careful to separate good apples from the bad, the rotten apples. Only after this act of separation is complete, can we make the correct, optimal, act of choice, purchasing only the good apples. In doing so, we have benefited our health and our well-being. Separation is also inherent to many of our bodily processes, like in the kidney. Here, as always in the world of law of nature, there is no free choice. Only optimization. We choose the good because it is beneficial to us. Nowadays, science assists us forming clear distinction and separation between the good and the bad. And as science and technology progress, conducting optimization in our daily life has become easier than ever before. By contrast, in the world of randomness, the act of separating good from bad or good from evil, as commonly used in biblical terms, this act is a much harder task. And science cannot assist us fulfilling this task performed within the process of separation. In the world of randomness, one cannot clearly and immediately differentiate between the good and the bad. Let us demonstrate with an example. I am selling a used car, aware that the car carries a certain defect. I can inform the buyer about the defect, or I can inform her not. In the latter case, the thinking goes like this. I have allowed the buyer to inspect and check the car thoroughly, have I not? However, the defect was not exposed. It is the buyer's responsibility to identify the defect, not mine, is it not? Such thinking testifies to the daily blurring in the world of randomness, of good and bad or good and evil in biblical terms. Therefore, Jewish Torah explicitly instructs, for this example, Leviticus 19, 14. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor give a stumbling block to the blind. In other words, one cannot hide behind an argument like the one just articulated. It is the seller's responsibility to turn the blind into non-blind by alerting the buyer, the blind, to the defect in the car. Once we understand the act of separation in the two worlds and grasp the role of science in assisting us separating in the world of law of nature, how do we separate and choose right in the world of randomness? Moses, speaking to the children of Israel on behalf of the divine, set to them clear separation and clear choice. Separation Deuteronomy 30, 15 Behold, I have given you this day life and the good and death and the bad. Choosing Deuteronomy 30, 19 I call upon heaven and earth to witness this day against you, that I have set before thee life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Is free will an endowment of the human species, granted to humankind for eternity? Not according to scripture. 
The free will act bestowed on humankind, that of separating and choosing, has a limited lifespan. It is not eternal. According to Jewish prophets, time would come when God revealed himself. And then, free will, by definition, will be no more. Zephaniah 3, 9 For then I will convert the peoples to a non-confounded language, that they all call upon the name of Jehovah, to serve him shoulder to shoulder. Zechariah 14, 7 And Jehovah will be king over all the earth. On that day, Jehovah will be one and his name one. Furthermore, not only the task of separating and choosing no longer be in the hands of mankind. At end times, the divine will conduct a process of separation of his own. However, the separation process will not be between good and evil as the latter exists today in the world of randomness. Rather, it will be between the righteous and the evil who exist amidst humankind. This message is repeated in scripture by no less than seven prophets at least. Examples I will also turn my hand against you and will purge away your dross as with lie, and remove all your alloy, Isaiah 1, 25. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will smelt them and try them. Jeremiah 9, 6 As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall you be melted in the midst of it. Ezekiel 22, 22 I will bring the third part through the fire, and refine them as one refined silver, and test them as one tests gold. Zechariah 13, 9 But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like the washer's soap and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Malachi 3, 2 The last one is also an ominous message for what is to come at end times when free will is no more. And it is succinctly articulated by Prophet Daniel 12, 10. Many will be purged and purified and refined at these turbulent times are these prophecies unfolding in front of our eyes thank you for listening until the next episode goodbye